Hello. I thought I'd share with you how I go at the process of reading a federal budget. I've been going to budget lockups for years. And what they do is they give you the confidential sensitive material, which of course has been leaked by this government for the last few days or weeks. You sit in a locked room and your Blackberry is taken away from you and you get to read this big fat document and you have about two hours to go through everything and ask Finance Canada officials uh, for clarification on any questions you have. So my approach to this thing is, first of all, when I'm reading it, I want to make sure it's economically responsible. I want to know it's fiscally responsible. So I'm looking at knowing that this budget is going to be a two-year, $64 billion deficit. I wanted to know what's the plan to get out of the deficit and what's the plan to get out of the recession. And I've had a lot of time, as you can see, marking this thing up. There isn't a plan for how we get out of the recession. There's the uh, stated hope and expectation that by uh, spending a lot of money and cutting a lot of taxes, this government will get us out of a recession. But the absence of a plan is worrying. For one thing, one of the places where the government says they're creating an economic stimulus is in income tax cuts. Yet in this very document, and if you go online to try to find it, you'll find it at page 238, there's an explanation that reduction in personal income taxes uh, will not create an economic stimulus in the short term and much less possibly long term potentially helps the economy, but it's certainly not an economic stimulus as Finance Canada says in this document. So why is Harper pretending it is? Then looking further into the question of long term structural deficits, when you cut income taxes and you increase spending, of course you're going to create deficits. But when the economy bounces back to normal, which we hope will happen, you've still had these tax cuts and where is your government revenue going to come from to ensure that your government can continue to do at least those things it was doing before the economic stimulus package? In other words, you will cripple the de your government to deficits in the future or you commit the government of Canada to far more painful cuts in things that we all need that government provides. So when I look at this document, I don't see how we get out of long-term structural deficit and how we avoid it with the way they've approached it. The other thing is, does it get us out of recession? Well, the kinds of spending that's announced, and it sounds good, there's a, an announcement in here of $12 billion in infrastructure spending. But it's very complex, it's got a lot of red tape, and it also requires a certain, uh, for a certain number of the programs, there has to be matching funding from other levels of government. Now, the $12 billion in infrastructure over two years, uh, so that's $6 billion a year, goes for uh, construction and repair of bridges and roads. This is all good, but there's no focus. In fact, it, it goes from rigid bridges and roads to small craft harbors, broadband internet access, electronic health records, laboratories. Now, this is interesting. They're going to actually call it an economic stimulus and part of infrastructure to upgrade the labs where the Canadian Food Inspection Agency checks our food. I really didn't think that was infrastructure. And border crossings. No mention at all of mass transit. And again, no commitment to expand renewable energy. So this infrastructure spending, contrast that with the approach Barack Obama's taken. Very clear announcement of $19 billion down south of the border to renewable energy investments to create 1.5 million new jobs. This document isn't even able to quantify how many new jobs it thinks it will create because the investments and the stimulus package aren't geared in ways that are quantifiable. There's just this uh, general long list of things that could be funded for infrastructure, but, but no real clear direction and no real plan. On top of that, it doesn't protect the vulnerable. The EI changes are modest, an additional five weeks to EI payment. There's no change to the two-week waiting period. There's very little in this budget for seniors, uh, a really worrying thing, particularly for those seniors who've seen their investment income shrink. The registered retirement income fund uh, is just the same as it was with the economic statement in November. Also the same as the economic statement in November, this budget continues to eliminate women's pay equity in the federal civil service uh, by replacing it with other legislation. Uh, there is nothing in this budget uh, to expand our national park system, nothing for cleaner water, nothing for clean air. Uh, and at the same time, it claims to have a green infrastructure fund, but that as well is a very small amount of money and dedicated to things like expanding elect the electricity grid. Not a bad idea, but it's not 
focused in a way that suggests it will necessarily be green. We do need a good east-west electricity grid, but this budget is not going to get us the full, the full length of that commitment because it's just too little money in green infrastructure. And frankly, an electricity grid isn't necessarily green. So taken all together, I, I, I'm afraid on reading this that, I'm, that it's neither economically sound it's not fiscally responsible, and it clearly isn't green or helpful to the shift to a low carbon economy. It really isn't designed to do that at all. I couldn't vote for this if I was in the House of Commons. I don't see how this begins to meet the needs of Canadians. And I invite you to look at it on the government website. Let me know if you have a different opinion. But I, I, I'm very disappointed in this, and I would hope that uh, that perhaps through amendments it could be improved in the House of Commons process. Otherwise, it can't be a budget that could be supported. Thank you.